Hi there, I'm answering one of your questions today and it's all about adding video to your brand photography business. Now, I love this question because I've been doing this for years for my clients and it doesn't seem that outside of the box that we would be providing some video support for our branding clients. Now, why is that? So as a brand photographer, we are working with businesses and with the demand for video these days, it's natural that if we're working with them on their still images for their website and social media content, it's natural for them to also ask, do you also provide video? And when I first had that question asked to me, I wasn't sure how to answer, but I went for it and I started supporting them with video and it's actually grow my business substantially. So if you're thinking about adding video to your brand photography business, I highly recommend considering it. And I wanted to create this video that would encompass five tips when really thinking about adding video support for your brand photography business or a video offering for your brand photography business. And I was so happy that this question was posed by one of you, my subscribers, on how to think about my process or your process, how to add video when you're already there for photos. Um, and I thought I'd give you some other tips to consider. Okay, so the first thing thinking about adding video to your photography business is memory and storage. So we know our cameras are getting better and better. Megapixels are getting bigger and bigger. And for photographers, our file sizes are increasing as well. When we shift to video, wow, there is a big uptick in how much memory we need on our memory cards and on our storage, our external drives, when we get home and download and start editing. So I wanted to touch on that. So for example, I recently worked with a client, we did photo and we did video, and we took, I broke down all the numbers. So it was a small photo session, let's say. They had basically remodeled this entire kitchen because I work with the furniture maker for this business. So now he's building out kitchens. So we wanted photos of the kitchen. We wanted portraits of him in the kitchen. And then for his wife, she does all the styling. So we wanted styling images of her in the kitchen. So there was like a three categories of images that we wanted to capture for that small photo shoot section. So I captured 493 images on that photo side. And that represented 27.93 gigabytes. Now I am also shooting on the Canon R5C, so much bigger files. They're averaging around like 48 megabytes per file. So that was on the photo side. Then on the video side, I was taking very small clips. The goal for the video was to create a nice banner video for the website. And then I wanted to capture some vertical clips that they can then use on social media. So I was working through the space with the natural lighting. I brought lighting and I took about 55 clips. These are very short couple second clips. Just those 55 clips represented 10.24 gigabytes. Now compared to the almost 500 images I took, that's almost half and it's only 55 clips. So storage gets eaten up pretty quickly. So for external storage, I started when I really was offering video for clients and we were doing bigger videos and bigger videos. I ended up getting, um, I have several of these. The last one I bought was a 16 terabyte, which may sound humongous, Maybe start with a 10 or a 12 terabyte. Storage and external drives have come way down in price since when I started. So always be looking for deals. But I have this on my, my desktop, attached to my laptop, and when I'm downloading, 
I'm creating files for each client, creating a file just for video subfile within that, and then um, I am storing all the videos and the edits onto a terabyte, onto, this is a 16 terabyte. Now it may not fill the whole 16 at the end of the year, that's okay. I like to now buy a new one per year because that's how much video memory is eating up onto these drives. So just something to keep in mind. So these have worked well, I have several of these. For the memory cards, I wanted to touch on that. So what I'm shooting on now is my Canon 5D Mark IV, which is a very common um, camera out there if you are shooting that. Now I have a compact flash in there, it's a SanDisk, and I went up to a 256. So that's a pretty large size for this camera. Now the file sizes might be slightly smaller than when we get to the Canon R5C. So that's where I am for the Mark IV. And then for the Canon R5C, I went with an OWC. This is a 512 gigabyte card. It's an Atlas Pro and that's what I use. And it's been so far perfectly fine for capturing photos and video for one shoot, whether it's a interview video, whether it's an instructional video and it's much longer, this has been fine for capturing all the content that I need. I don't need to like switch out multiple cards. That's the one thing. You can have a lot of little cards, but then you have to keep track of them. It's just gonna make your workflow a little bit slower if you're always trying to manage multiple cards. I like one card that I can then, as soon as I get home, I download. I don't keep these on until end of the week and then I decide to download images or video. No, as soon as I get home, I'm downloading, I'm getting my backup, and then when I go to my next shoot, I can clear my card and move on. Okay, so number one and number two for tips is um, the memory cards and the external drive for when you get home. It is a big bump, so those are gonna be initial investments when you're thinking about video. You may already be set up, so that might be already taken care of. And then that will go into my step three, which is my process. When you're starting out, I suggest doing the photos first because that's your comfort zone and you know how to manage and be efficient and go through the whole shoot. Now, I may have, you may have heard me say this before in other videos, but I do not do the half day, full day structure. My mini shoots where I'm going on location, I may shoot for an hour, hour and a half with one client. For my bigger shoots where they want um, for a website project, for um, you know website and social media, that might be two, possibly two and a half depending on how many people, the team, um, maybe there's a second location nearby, that's two, two and a half. So those are really my days. So adding video, depending on what the video is, it obviously is going to extend. When you're, when you're starting out and when you're pitching clients for video, I suggest go with the, the most, something that will help the client, of course, always be helping and strategizing with the client, but something that you can manage and add on. In the beginning, one suggestion that I have are banner videos. These are popular and many businesses are asking for this. And simply when someone lands on a website, that banner, instead of a big, amazing image, they can now swap that out to a nice video clip. And I wanna, and I can show you some examples too. So here is an interior designer for her session, we shot video at the end, just banner clips. So just for comparison, we did a more robust shoot. I took 833 images that represented 46.44 gigabytes of space. And then I only took about 26 clips for the video. And I, you know, I take a 
few of the same thing and then I picked the one that I like the best. 26 clips, that, only, that represented 4.7 gigs. So just another comparison from the shoot I was mentioning before. I just kept that at the end. All the photos were done. We had that huge checklist done. And now I was just setting up my tripod and my slider and we were just doing a couple shots for the video. Now we already knew what we were going to shoot before I was getting there. That's another piece to the project. You want to be discussing the video. This isn't like on the fly when you're there taking pictures, they ask for a video and then you're shooting. Could that happen? Of course. You want to gauge what you can really deliver. If it's something simple, always keep it simple in the beginning, then certainly go for it. It's always a test. You can charge them after, or maybe when you're starting out, you may suggest, oh, this would be a great little video clip. Could I take this clip for you? And maybe throw that in. You're building your portfolio and they're getting just a couple minutes more of your time and they'll be so appreciative of that. So always be thinking of those types of strategies. If it's a client that you have been working with or this is so in the direction that you want to go to with your clients, just capture a clip and then you can be using that over and over again to promote yourself and doing video. Um, so always be leveraging it, even though you may give that to them as like a free clip, really you're gonna reap the rewards by now showcasing that and getting business your way. So, you know, be strategic and um, that can, that's like my process. That's what I'm thinking about in the beginning. Always keep it simple. Having a banner image or those little social media clips, there's no audio involved. You're using the lighting that's there. It makes it so much more approachable and gets your foot one step forward into doing video for your branding clients. Um, I actually created a PDF in the description below you can download, but it's their video ideas. It's five video ideas and it's no audio required. So these ideas like the website banner clips are ways that you can kind of pitch to clients that you can produce for them. They don't have the pressure of the audio or being on camera, speaking to camera. It's a great little segue and the more comfortable they, they get, the bigger the jobs will come your way. Okay. So I wanted to just show you a couple my steps in the banner image process. I know since this is not an audio based file, it's going to be very small. I know for my website, the file has to be under eight megabytes and it's just very approachable. So here I'm going to walk you through, I'm bringing in a file into, I use Final Cut Pro, but we're using very simple steps here to get you thinking about how you can deliver. So it's two things. One, you're gonna just edit the clips in a software of your choice. So let's say Final Cut Pro. And then you have to optimize it for your website. So I'm gonna show you that now. So then you can just see it's a very simple two-step process um, so let me show you that now. All right, so we are in Final Cut Pro, and what I want to do is create a banner clip for this client. We did some drone work. So I think this entrance clip would be great for a banner clip. So you can see it goes all the way back here. So we need to cut this and get it ready for a banner clip. Things to think about. So for this client, I have Blooms of Lost Acres. I create a library for each client. I've been doing that recently. It helps with sizing of these giant libraries in Final Cut Pro. Okay, so I'm going to create a new project within the spring pick your own season for this client. So I'm going to do banner clip for website. Now this is 4K and because it was a drone, I know it was shot at 30 frames per second. This was my regular Canon um, R5C. It would be at that 24 frames per second. So I'm gonna click okay. 
And then at the end of my list, these are all different things I've made. Here is the banner, banner clip for the website. Okay, so this is the clip that I want to use. Now, the whole clip, if I put this whole clip in, it'd be 28 seconds long. Way too long and way too big for a website banner clip. You really, depending on the file and the type of um, video, you really want to be like five seconds, maybe 10 seconds. So what I do is I look through the file and I'm looking at it and like, I like seeing the building. So maybe about here, I'm going to cl uh, click on I for in. And then about here, let's see, I'm going to do O for out. And I'm going to drag, see the little hand that appears in the box once I go over it. I'm going to drag that to the timeline. Okay, so that's about seven seconds. So I'm going to hit the space bar. This playhead here is here. I'm going to hit the place, the space bar. I don't need to rotate it. I'm going to click done. Hit the space bar and let's play this. That looks nice. And I'm going to stop. All right, five seconds. Now, when I go on the timeline, you can see how once I go to the edge, I could just drag this in or you can cut. So I'm just going to drag that in. All right, so now we have a five second clip. You can see the time here. <clears throat> I think the color looks good. You could do some advanced editing with this triangle and click on color wheels. And if you wanted to bring the sky out, you could bring the highlights down. You can make the whole thing a little bit brighter. You could bring the shadows down. It's almost like contrast, mid tones as well. But I think that looks good for demonstration's sake. I think that's great. Okay, so now up upper right hand corner, going to export file, web clip for the website. That looks good. Settings. Now you can see it's showing how many megabytes in the lower right hand corner here 14.7. Now for a website, I try to go below eight. But we're going to optimize to bring this down. So 14.7, that's pretty good. If I moved it up to the highest quality, look at how high it goes up. That's going to be pretty hard to optimize down to under 8. So I'm going to choose the 19 by 20 by 1080. I'm going to click Next. And this is where I want the file to live. So here's the client. Spring, pick your own sec um, section, subfolder drone clips, and I'm going to click save. Now, as that saves, so I can see this in the upper left-hand corner, the next step is I use a compression software that's free that's called Handbrake. It's recommended by my website, but there are many on the market. So I'm going to click play so we can see it. This would be great when you first load into or jump on a website. That looks great. And I'm going to X out, and now I'm going to open up Handbrake. Okay, so I believe I have Handbrake open already. Here it is. All right, so now I'm going to grab that file. Wait, cancel. I'm going to open source, go to that file. So I'm going to find that client, go to the subfolder, find that banner for website clips. It was 15.8 megabytes when it was exported. So that's good. I'm going to open. And the key is web optimized. The key here is to have the web optimized checked. So always look for that. Then down below, you have the file name. I like to write optimized after. Totally up to you, just so you know and you can find it. And then where is it going to live? There's that same folder and the drone clips. So that's great. If you needed to drop it somewhere else, you could click browse and find that other folder. Everything looks good. I'm going to click on start. And now it's going to process. You can see it running in the lower left-hand corner. It's done. Now when I go to that clip, website optimize, 7.8 megabytes. 
we got it under the eight. Now, if this was larger than eight, I would go back to Final Cut Pro. I would reduce the length of that video and try again to get it under that eight. I hope you enjoyed that little walkthrough. Very simple and effective, something that you can offer right out of the gate to your clients. My last tip is be your first client. Now I did this for a while, for many years, where I was creating videos for my YouTube channel, but also for my website, for social media. And this helped me get used to audio, lighting, doing mics, all I've tested out different software, different um, equipment, how I wanted to frame myself, what tripod I like the best. I really was using myself as a guinea pig to kind of go through and test. And that made me so much more confident when a client did approach me and ask about video. All right, so I hope you found this helpful. I have a video that I created on all the types of equipment that I've you know, built up over the years for video. So if you, depending on where you are, if you're in the beginning, middle, or more advanced with video for your clients, I thought I would um, leave the link here so that you could check out some of the equipment that I've started using along the way. And I hope you enjoy it. See you there.